On July 17, 1996, Trans World Airlines Flight 800 exploded and crashed into the Atlantic Ocean off the coast of Long Island, New York. All 230 passengers and crew on board perished in one of the most tragic and mysterious aviation disasters in history. Today, we delve into the story of TWA Flight 800, the exhaustive investigation that followed and the lasting impact it had on aviation safety. Welcome to Airspace. TWA Flight 800 was a scheduled international flight from New York's John F. Kennedy Airport to Charles de Gaulle Airport in Paris. The aircraft, a Boeing 747-100, had been in service for 25 years and had accumulated over 93,000 flight hours. On July 17, 1996, the flight was crewed by an experienced team, led by Captain Ralph Kevorkian, Captain and Czech Airman Steven Snyder, flight engineer Richard Campbell, as well as a 25-year-old flight engineer trainee, Oliver Crick. The flight did not start out smoothly for the crew. While still at the gate, the crew was confronted with various problems. First, refueling seemed to take forever, since there were minor malfunctions in the refueling system. Then, there appeared to be a bag that was loaded, but the accompanying passenger had not boarded the aircraft. The bag had to be found and offloaded, which further delayed the flight. When it was finally found, the ground crew realized that the passenger that the bag belonged to had indeed boarded the aircraft and the bag was again loaded into the cargo hold of the 747. After this mess was settled, the crew finally got the clearance to push the aircraft back to begin their journey. But alas, a service vehicle had broken down just behind the 747. Further delay resulted until the stricken vehicle could finally be towed away. When it was removed, TWA 800 could finally begin its journey towards France. During this entire ground stay, it had been a nice and rather warm summer evening. To keep everyone on board cool, the two air conditioning packs located in the lower fuselage had to work overtime. Keep this in mind for later. As the sun began to set on that fateful summer evening, TWA Flight 800 taxied to runway 2 to right at JFK Airport, preparing for takeoff. At approximately 8.19 pm Eastern Daylight Time, the plane lifted off the runway, carrying 212 passengers and 18 crew members on board. Among the passengers were a diverse group of individuals, families, business people, and even a group of 16 students from Montresville High School in Pennsylvania, accompanied by their teachers embarking on a once-in-a-lifetime trip to France. While the 747 climbed into the evening skies, everything appeared to be proceeding normally. However, just 12 minutes into the flight, at 8.31 pm, disaster struck. A huge explosion shook the aircraft. The forward section of the aircraft briefly remained attached, but then rotated downwards and separated from the rest of the plane. The wings at the aft section of the fuselage continued flying for a short while, then plummeted towards the ocean below. Several stunned onlookers witnessed the explosion and descent of the massive airliner. Many pilots of aircraft near the explosion made reports to air traffic control on the radio. One flight, Eastwind 507, saw the explosion just ahead. Listen for yourself. Within moments of the explosion, the US Coast Guard initiated a massive search and rescue operation. Boats, helicopters and aircraft from multiple agencies scoured the waters, searching for any signs of survivors. As night turned to day, the grim reality became apparent. There were no survivors. Instead, the search efforts transitioned to a recovery mission aimed at retrieving the remains of the victims and the wreckage of the aircraft. Over the following weeks and months, the waters off the coast of Long Island became the site of one of the largest and most complex recovery efforts in aviation history. Using divers, boats and even scallop trawlers, more than 95% of the wreckage was eventually recovered, along with the remains of all 230 victims. As search and recovery efforts continued, so too did the investigation into the cause of the disaster. The National Transportation Safety Board led the investigation, with the support from the FAA, the CIA, the FBI and other agencies. In the immediate aftermath of the crash, speculation about the cause of the disaster was rampant. Some suggested that a missile or a bomb had brought down the plane, 
while others pointed to a mechanical failure or even pilot error. To determine the cause, the NTSB assembled a team of experts in various fields, including metallurgy, structural engineering and chemistry. Over the course of four years, the team conducted a series of tests and analyses on the recovered wreckage, as well as the flight data and cockpit voice recorders. They also interviewed witnesses, studied radar data and examined maintenance records of the aircraft. In a massive effort, a large section of the 747 was reconstructed in a hangar on Long Island. The investigation revealed that a large explosion must have originated near the leading edge of the wings on the lower side of the fuselage. Within 3 to 5 seconds of this explosion, the forward section of the aircraft folded downwards, separated from the aircraft and plunged towards the ocean. The rest of the aircraft continued on and started climbing because of the shifted center of gravity and massive forces acting on the now blunt cross section. Eventually, the wings stalled, the structure started disintegrating caught fire and started descending towards the ocean in a massive fireball that was witnessed by hundreds of stunned onlookers on the ground and in the air. One of the most persistent theories surrounding the crash of TW-8 Flight 800 was that the aircraft was downed by a missile. This theory gained traction due to several factors, including numerous eyewitness accounts of streaks of light in the sky consistent with a missile trajectory and the presence of a US Navy ship in the vicinity of the crash site. The FBI conducted an extensive criminal investigation to explore the possibility of a missile attack, as well as other potential criminal acts such as a bombing. They interviewed over 7000 witnesses, examined countless pieces of evidence and pursued leads around the globe. Despite these efforts, no evidence was found to support the missile theory or any other criminal act. The NTSB, in conjunction with the CIA, also conducted an exhaustive analysis of the radar data and eyewitness accounts. The agencies concluded that the streaks of light reported by some witnesses were actually fragments of the aircraft after the initial explosion, rather than a missile. Furthermore, they determined that the presence of the US Navy ship was unrelated to the crash. Regardless, the public and the victims' families were not satisfied and the missile theory remained persistent. When it became known that traces of explosives were found on several pieces of the wreckage, the media was all over this information. And yet, the NTSB managed to issue several explanations why there could have been explosive residue on the wreckage, while the cause of the crash was not caused by said explosives. It concluded that it was quite possible that the residue stemmed from 1991, when TWA transported troops during the Gulf War. Another possibility was that the residue was transferred to the plane during a dog training exercise held only a month before the crash. During this exercise, specimens of real explosives had been hidden in the plane by the dog trainers. Of course, these were retrieved afterwards, but traces of explosives could have remained. And finally, most pieces of the wreckage were transported to the shore on military ships that of course come into regular contact with explosives. But the question remained, what had led to the huge explosion that brought down one of the world's largest airliners? The airline industry is constantly improving its controls and safeguards, and thankfully, its modern problems are less about safety and more so about money. Persistently high fuel and labor costs have dealt a major blow to US airline stocks. But let me tell you, you can still find opportunities in luxury markets. I know because I've seen how easy it is with today's sponsor, Masterworks. Masterworks is giving you access to multi-million dollar hard assets in the form of contemporary art. See, fine art prices overall appreciated an average of 29% last year, according to Barron's. Because like other luxury collectibles, like vintage cars, these assets aren't necessarily subject to the same shocks as other markets. And the best thing about it? Masterworks handles all the storage, maintenance and authentication for you, which saves you the hassle of owning, maintaining and securing art by yourself. In their last three exits, Masterworks delivered 10, 13 and 35% net returns. Since I partnered with them last spring, they've sold 8 paintings, all for positive returns. And get this, all of their sales so far have delivered positive returns. It's easy to see why over 670,000 people have signed up so far, and why many Masterworks offerings can sell out in hours, if not minutes. But my subscribers can skip the waitlist and invest today. Just click the link in the description. 
Now let's get back to the story. As the missile idea and other criminal theories were ultimately ruled out, the investigation turned its focus to potential mechanical failures. After an extensive examination of the recovered wreckage and a series of tests, the NTSB determined that the most likely cause of the explosion was a catastrophic failure of the aircraft's center wing fuel tank. Investigators discovered that the center wing fuel tank had contained only a small amount of fuel at the time of the explosion, namely 50 gallons or 190 liters. With so little fuel in the tank, it was quite possible that a large volume of fuel vapors had filled the rest of the tank volume. Remember how the aircraft's air conditioning packs had to cool the aircraft during the lengthy ground stay? These are located just beneath the center wing fuel tank. While they delivered cool air to the 747's cabin, they themselves became rather hot. This heat then transferred to the center wing tank, heating the already volatile fuel vapors therein. All that was missing for a disaster was a single spark that ignited this mixture. The NTSB concluded that this spark most likely originated from the aircraft's aging electrical wiring, causing a violent explosion that ruptured the fuel tank and led to the disintegration of the aircraft. Just minutes before the explosion, the captain had remarked that the fuel indication of one of the engines was going crazy. Further, arcing in some of the wires underpinned this theory. The findings of the NTSB investigation into the crash of TWA Flight 800 led to a series of recommendations aimed at improving aviation safety. Among these recommendations were the implementation of new fuel tank safety measures, including the installation of inerting systems to reduce the flammability of fuel vapor and the replacement of aging electrical wiring. Fuel inerting systems work by reducing the quantity of oxygen in the air mixture present in the fuel tanks, therefore decreasing the chance of a fuel vapor explosion. In addition, the NTSB called for improved aircraft maintenance and inspection procedures, as well as enhanced training for flight crews and maintenance personnel. The FAA adopted many of these recommendations and in the years following the TWA Flight 800 tragedy, the aviation industry saw significant improvements in safety and a reduction in the number of fuel tank related accidents. The story of TWA Flight 800 is one of tragedy, but also of perseverance and dedication. The tireless efforts of the investigators, search and recovery teams and countless others involved in the aftermath of the disaster have left an indelible mark on the history of aviation. Their work not only brought closure to the families of the victims, but also led to critical advancements in aviation safety that continue to protect the lives of passengers and crew around the world. As we remember the 230 lives lost in that fateful summer evening in 1996, we also honor the legacy of TWA Flight 800, a legacy of determination, resilience and the relentless pursuit of answers in the face of tragedy. Thank you for joining me on this journey through the story of TWA Flight 800. As we continue to travel the skies, we must never forget the lessons learned from this tragedy and strive to ensure that the passengers and crew who take to the skies each day can do so with confidence in the safety of their journey. If you liked the video, remember to leave a like and subscribe. It helps the channel immensely. Thank you so much and see you all in the next one.